Racing takes place out at Turfentine on Saturday, uh, the 6th of April, 2024. It is day three, Champions Day, and it is uh, four grade ones, and uh, we've got five other feature races. And two million rand uh, pick six uh, carryover, likely pool of eight million rand, and uh, it is uh, set to be a cracker meeting, whirlpool meeting, and uh, looking forward to it. Ten races on the program. Race number one gets underway at uh, 12 o'clock, and... Uh, Joining me on the line is Alistair Cohen. We've, of course, got a doubleheader on Saturday, racing out at Hollywood Bets, Kenilworth and Turfentine. And uh, Alistair, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks for you. On the eve of a, a meeting like this, you can only be good. For me, this is the best meeting that South Africa's held so far uh, this year. Um, we're going to be seeing a champion season. I'm sure when we get to World Cup Day, we'll probably be talking about the, uh, the stars aligning for yet another blockbuster but with that said this for me is the meeting of the season so far as you mentioned that fixing carryover is uh, is a huge carrot down with a total of eight million rand we'll all commingle with four races races six seven eight and nine so expect those grade one pools to be even bigger better and to take a bigger slice of perhaps whatever value might be on offer but it always is a great meeting it's easy my favorite day on the territory calendar one of my favorite days on the south african calendar so let's go full steam ahead here Race number one at 12 o'clock, the off time, 1160 meters the distance. The bipod commences with the running off race number two. Now, in race number one, your favorite is Let's Play Poker, 18 to 10. Vibe SA has been the horse that has attracted all the support ever since the markets opened. 10 to 1 into 2 to 1. It's 4 to 1 about so seductive, and then it's 14 to 1 and better bar those. Now, this horse, Vibe SA, he's obviously got to catch the, the eye given that uh, there's been a lot of support around him. and He's been a bit costly to follow here in KZN prior to his move up to the high felt. He's got the form that will give him a serious chance, but he does return off a 202-day layoff. But going sprinting first up, up in the high felt, that could just be to his advantage. And he's got a high number draw, which could suit him. But uh, what's your thoughts on race number one? Personally, I thought number seven, so seductive, could, uh, could be the horse that they all need to beat. But uh, what's your thoughts, Alistair? Cohen and myself in the same camp here with number seven, so seductive in race number one. Moving along to race number two, 1160 meters the distance. This is the Volkerbos Drift SA Phillies Nursery, a grade two contest, 12.35 the off time. It is the start of the bar pot and uh, your favorite here is uh, Almond C and uh, Almond C is at around uh, two to ten. It is Little Ballerina at uh, five to one and then it's 14 to one and better bar those. Now, uh, Almond C, she's unbeaten. She's three from three. She's been uh, super, super impressive to date. She's uh, absolutely uh, destroyed the opposition. Five lengths, five lengths, and then eight lengths last time out when she beat uh, just, uh, just Reckless, who was uh, uh, the KZN uh, Raider. You've got uh, Little Ballerina, who comes through uh, with the uh, Western Cape form. She ran third last time out behind the one stripe. She was beaten... Uh, one and a half lengths and uh, then you've got uh, Mountain High who I thought ran a nice race on debut but um, Alistair race number two it all revolves around number two Almond C. 
Yeah, there's no doubt about that with Hill. Um, she's unbeaten. She's done absolutely nothing wrong. She's looked the part. She might not have beaten much along the way, but she is undoubtedly a very, very hard horse to beat. Under no illusions of that, she's got an inside a straw, the scratching hops, of course, ever so slightly more. Likewise, for number seven, we called Ballerina. But the big kicker about number two, I will see there right here, is that she doesn't pull up all that well. She, after the race, it's, it's twice that she's pulled up the stress straight after the race, on debut and in the last start of the Ruffian Stakes, um, and it's been well documented all the stories that came out of that. So, will she feel the extra 160 metres, especially was lucky to be a sting out of the ground track? Uh, if she's vulnerable, and there's no way that I can motivate her being vulnerable, because she has the horse to beat, she has to be the top selection. Anyone taking on number two on the knows something that, that no one else does. But if she is vulnerable, this is going to be the day that she's vulnerable. Number seven, Little Ballerina, her main aim was Hollywood Bet Scottsville and the Ellen Robertson at the start of June. Um, she's doing so well at home that there's no reason to sidestep this. Obviously, her maiden win her, her run in the, um, in the slipper, the Cape Racing slipper, that form run is, is probably the strongest form, the strongest juvenile form in the country. And she ran a lovely race in the nursery. I know that wins of change was a type of disappointing at the Vile on Thursday, having run second in that nursery. But little Ballerina is doing very well. Meet on the bone, yes, but if there are any vulnerabilities in number two, I will see the Little Ballerina can pick up the pieces. Mountain High did catch the out first time out, but the form is very, very shallow there we go. So although any amount of smoke to improve for number eight Mountain High, um, she will need to improve quite a bit to take on the feature race form that we see from the unbeaten Alvin C, who was clearly the top choice, and number seven little ballerina who I expect to run a good race but probably ultimately chase Alvin C home. Race number three, the Tab SA Nursery, grade two, 1160 meters the distance, and it is uh, Pistol Pete that is your overwhelming favorite here he's been priced up at uh, we'll call it three to ten in the market it's five to ten uh, five to one about proceed and then it's 12 to one and better ball those now pistol piece is at three starts and he's been impressive in all three starts last time out making light to work off the opposition and uh, unlike his stable mate in the previous race he's uh, he does seem to have the right uh, right draw gate number seven and uh, alistair as opposed to Almond C, I, I don't think there's any doubts that uh, Pistol Pete will uh, enjoy 1160 meters. 100% the hill. He's a very, very hard horse to beat. He's got the mind for it, I believe. As opposed to Almond C, who, you know, she might copy the same sort of line almost as geriatrics and not be much of a, might not be the same force as a three-year-old as she was as a two-year-old. Whereas Pistol Pete looks like he's just. He's got it all the son of Buffalo Bill Cody. Three from three, he can kick from a fast gallop. He can sit just off him and kick. Um, yeah, one of the best bets on the card. There are obviously quite a few short class favourites. Not for one moment going to motivate too many more getting uh, having any vulnerabilities. But I think number seven, Pistol Pete, certainly from a bar pass and place accumulator perspective, is a very, very hard horse to, to beat. Horse to beat him home could be number six, Mark Pinner, too, though. Your hand runs the holds the source in very, very, very high esteem. Swept to the turf and team. A week earlier, and uh, he says, Keep an eye on the son of the eruption. You know, it might have to come another day that he has a really good chance of turning over number seven, Pistol Peach. But maybe nice box exactly six and seven to make good money because there's obviously no real class on number seven, Pistol Peach. That's race number three, the SA Tab, uh, the Tab SA Nursery over 1160 meters. Moving along to race four, which will be the start of the carryover pick six, 1400 meters. The distance this is a Tab Hawaii stakes, um, a great two, 1345 is the off time. Favorite Sandringham Summit at nine to ten. Lucky lad, I see he's drifted out, 15 to ten, all the way out to four to one. White Pearl, 14 to one into 11 to two. It's an 8-1 to one and better ball those. Now, I thought it was a two-horse race and I like the look of number 8, Lucky Lad. I must be honest, I think his last start would have brought him on a lot. He gets a, a nice draw going around the turn and I think his penultimate start is, um, is a run that we completely put a line through and we all know what he did as a, as a juvenile in those sprinting races. So, I think he's a horse at 4-1. At to one. I'm, ha I'm happy to take 4-1 to one about this horse. I think 1,400 meters will suit him down to the ground. And there's no doubt that Sean Terry will have him uh, where he needs to be for this contest. Well, yeah, I had a chat to Sean Terry after his last run in the Man of War. Um, and, and Sean was very quick to say that he needed the run very badly. And he was pleased with the run from Lucky Lad. Obviously, he would have hoped that there was more of a three-year-old campaign for the Sun. Again, he had a green light, but after Hollywood Bets wave on the Premier's Champion stakes. 
it just wasn't ready for it. He, he came out from a bad draw and he was just never in the hunt after the start that he got. It was just an absolute nightmare of a run from number eight, Lucky Lad. I think that if he does show his absolute best, I mean, let's not forget, he's beaten Sandring and Summit before. It was a long time ago. It was uh, 13 months before the Hawaii Stakes. But he beat on Sandling and Summit before. I'm surprised Sandling and Summit's dropping back to 1,400 meters. I don't buy the, the stance that people say that he doesn't stay. I think he'll get 2,000 meters. He might be stretching when he passed, anywhere past that. Um, but I think he was there for the touch too much to do and, and took on a horse who just refused to lose in the South African Classic. So the drop in distance surprises me. Um, so all those that are beating up the Sandling and Summit tree, and, and yes, I respect number seven Sandling and Summit, and he is in my pick six, which is my suggested bet. But I would have thought that he'd be a more natural fit for the 2,000 meter race later in the day than the 1,400 meter race. So, lucky, I'm willing to take on something in some of the number eight, lucky lad. Other horses that I've got in the play, you've got to watch Anfield's rocket, rocket run in the, um, in the Tommy Hotspur on the 2nd of March. That was an unbelievable effort. Please believe me, he was flying at the end. I still believe that he's a very, very good horse. And I think that he's best over this type of distance, funny enough. He's a big chance of a one Anfield's rocket. He's a horse for a big occasion. So don't let him run loose. He's my value in the race. He's my big pass inclusion in the pick six. And there are a few whispers about his chances. And number 10, White Pearl. Is this a master straight from my pick Drew one, fully receiving way to around. Could be Daniel Pettino's first stake winner. I think number 10, White Pearl's another horse to consider. Is she better than Sandring and Summer to the lucky lad? Probably not. But with the late turnaround that she's got, and probably with a better prep than those two horses have had, and it's in White Pearl, I think he's a player that is just under the radar. White Pearl definitely was finishing off a race very nicely last time out is one and is one to keep an eye on. But uh, the upset potential in race number four could be number one and feels rocket. Moving along to race number five, which is uh, the Volkbosch Rift uh, Bridget Oppenheimer SA Oaks, a grade two over 2,450 meters. 20 past 2 is the off time. It is the start of Jackpot 1. Silver Sanctuary, your 5 to 10 favorite. 5 to 1 about Let's Go Now. Francis Ethel at 7 to 1. And then it is 10 to 1. And better ball, though. Scratch number 6, Sukumvit. It's a field of just 10 runners that uh, are set to line up now. Number 1, Silver Sanctuary. She found a stable companion. Give me another bit too good for her in uh, the first two legs of uh, the Triple Tiara. There's no gimme now in this contest and uh, she looks to be a filly that will uh, stay the, the 2,450 meter trip. So she's no doubt the one to beat. You know, Rahul, when I first looked at this race, I thought, right, I'm going to try and take on Silver Sanctuary with other horses. Um, I looked at the pedigree, I looked at my Sanctuary, who was with Duncan Howells, who battled to get him out. Um, I looked at her brother, safe passenger runs later on in the day. He's featured over 2,400 meters. He's obviously, she's obviously by Silvano, the Silver Saint Peter, so the trip should be no doubt from that perspective. Um, perhaps concerningly, it is a, uh, a half sister to the horse who ran Wings of Change, who got beaten over 1,200 meters at the bar just 48 hours earlier. But then I watched all the reruns again, and I was beyond doubt that this is the horse to beat. She became from what looked like a race, I was going to go five horses and look for a result. She became a bank for an all bets. Um, in the first leg of the Vilkabos Tr Triple Tiara, she stayed on really strongly from near the back of the field. She came from behind my soulmate and she came from about the same place as Let's Go Now. She ran the finish out of those two horses. Again, in the South African Police Classic, the Vilkabos South African Police Classic, she came from the back of the field. The only horse who finished off that race better than her was Gimme Another, who is a cut above. And I think that the second best three-year-old filly in Joe Bigger Silver Sanctuary, for me, it's as simple as that. Um, so from a race that I was trying to get a result out of, I'm not going to try to get a result out of now. And the one Silver Sanctuary supposed to be, I think she'll win the final leg of the Book of the Triple Tiara. Give Mike the Cocker King sweep in the Triple Tiara. Richard Fareed's on board. To chase her home, number two, let's, uh, rather number two, my soulmate, this has already been the target for her. But on the first round of the Book of Triple Tiara, she's got a squeak of turning it around the silver sanctuary, she should stay, there's no doubt she'll stay, but her last one was so bad, so it's, it's difficult to get excited about. Let's Go Now, I, th I think the, the school tally is 3-1, my soulmate's over Let's Go Now, so I'm, I'm on the fence with my soulmate, then I've got to be on the fence with Let's Go Now. Beating Wings was well beaten by Silver Sanctuary last time, and then Francis Ethel, and I don't think the Oaks trial was anywhere near the same quality as what Silver Sanctuary brings into the picture. So the more I look at it, the more comfortable I am. Number one, Silver Sanctuary, hard to beat in the final leg of the Hooker Ball Strip Triple Tiara. All in here with horse number one, Silver Sanctuary in race number five. Moving along to race number six, 
This is a tab uh, Empress Club stakes, a grade one over 1600 meters, 14.55 is the off time. And we see the unbeaten, give me another, take her place here. She's looking for seven in a row. She's uh, a filly that has uh, grabbed uh, attention off of many players and uh, many uh, folks that are interested in horse racing. And uh, she's looking to uh, notch up seven in a row. What a filly she's uh, turning out to be, Alistair, two to 10. She's gonna be a tough nut to crack. She's um, absolutely deadly over the mile, four from four. And uh, it should be hard to beat her. Um, best bit of the weekend. Very, 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 very hard to beat Red Hill. JP Panama was unbeaten on her. She's six from six. She she does what every champion does. She gets herself out of trouble. I, I'm not going to com uh, compare her to Variety Club, but she's got a long way to get to Variety Club. But the style of running, I think, is worth having a look at. Um, because Variety Club always hit that flat spot and was able to get himself out of trouble and win races that he didn't look like he was going to win 400 metres up. She is very, very similar in that regard. And that 400 metres up, just before she drops again and finds that little kick at the end, she looks like she's in a spot of bother. But she's able to put it together. She's sensational. She's unbeaten. There's no reason to take her on. The bank of four bets, I think she's a very, very hard horse to beat. And I think let's enjoy what should be and what could be a procession. And uh, as she follows up the uh, the same pattern that her mother took. Mother Russia, she famously won this Bay One race on the Bay Zaki um, in 2017. So, uh, yeah, it will be a beautiful story coming together. And it should come together. That's uh, horse uh, number six. Uh, give me another all in her camp. And uh, as she uh, looks to make it seven from seven. Race number seven, uh, half post three, the off time. 1,000 meters, the distance. This is the Johnson Workwear Computer Form Sprint, a grade one contest. And um, it sets up to be an exciting race. Thunderstruck, your favorite at two to one. Dice, 22 to 10. They renew their, their rivalry after meeting in uh, the Cape Line Championships over the five furlongs. It is... Uh, Five to one, Golden Sickle, six to one, and better bar those. Now, uh, Dice, Thunderstruck, which one is your top selection, Alistair? Because they've got the draw. they both probably not at their best over 1,000 meters, but they've got the class, and uh, they could certainly fight out the finish because, as you mentioned, you, you probably want a high number draw with the rain around, and this Philly Golden Sickle, who is up in class, but... Uh, She's in terrific form, looking for five victories in a row. She's got that two draw, which uh, could be a, a huge disadvantage. But she's got the pace to get across. I love this race. I love the Johnson Workway computer form sprint. For me, it is the premier sprint on the South African calendar. It's not even close. For me, it should also be promoted as Jogo's biggest race because this is the, the Summit Cup's not going to, the, the placement of the Summit Cup is not going to attract K forces. Um, and the altitude factor is not going to attract too many cape horses to a 2,000 metre race in Joburg, but it will over a 1,000 metres. But all that is academic in this particular conversation. I absolutely love the computer form sprints, but I do think that this is part of open renewal of it because over the years there have been absolute certainties. Harry and Alice can live in this in her year. Um, obviously, last year the race was won by Issy Vungu Vungu with Princess Teller in the race, but we know Princess Teller had a setback before. They've been great, famous, unbelievable. I mean, this roll of honours is sensational. JJ the Jeff and Shay Shay. Shay Shay is winning this race with brilliant. He beat one of the strongest fields with Belgara. Uh, via Africa, there was another hot sprint. So I think uh, JJ the Jet Lane was in that race as well, funny enough. Um, so that just shows the quality of this race. It really is a race that has um, quite a lot of implications for the Equus Awards. This year, I'm on the camp of number three, Thunderstruck, but I have respect for a few. Um, a soft track is not going to help Dice all that much because he does get stuck in his races. And when he finds it, yeah, he's deadly, but I think he needs a fast track to be able to turn it on and beat at his best. But he's in our play number one, Dice. It would be foolish to write him off because he has beaten Thunderstruck at grade one level only uh, two and a half months earlier. So from that point of view, there shouldn't be much between them. I think it's turning into a lovely rivalry between the two. But I'm in Thunderstruck's camp this particular time. Two William Robertson says his absolute best for this type of day and for this type of race. I don't know if he's part the same caliber these days is what Thunderstruck and Dice are, but I've always got time for number two, William Robertson. He's been a runner-up in this race before. Um, he's also got an inside draw, but as opposed to Golden Sickle, he'll be coming from off him, so we might get the right type of pace to aim at. And then Golden Sickle, I mean, where she come from? She was, um, she, she was unplaced in a list of picture at Fairview less than a year ago, and now she's near the top of the boards in South Africa's number one sprint race. I mean, that's, that's the improvement of the stall 
Chris and Getrix has made. She's lightning quick. She will need to be absolutely untouched up front to be at her best. She's going to have to use plenty to get across and tow them along. And obviously, by virtue of this being the race that it is, there is going to be a lot of pace around her. But I'm not going to leave number 12, Golden Sickle, out, even though she is my fourth pick of the four I've got him. So in order of preference, I'm going 3, 1, 2, and 12 in the pick six. Those are my likely winners. And um, that's how I think the Johnson with the computer forms but will work out this year. Just for horses to play around in race number seven. Moving along to race number eight, the Tab SA Derby, a grade one over 2,450 meters. Five past four is the off time. Purple Pitcher, your favorite at 18 to 10. Four to one, Marauding Horde. Five to one, Pure Predator. Six to one about Hot Rubia. It's then 12 to one and Better Ball. Those, it's a field of 13 runners. Alistair, what's your thoughts on... Uh, the SA Derby, who's your top selection? Do you have a top selection? Because I know this horse, Marauding Horde, definitely keeps you interested. Definitely number six, Marauding Horde, Regil. Um, look at his pedigree. It's, it's gold cup blood that this horse brings in. So the extra distance is going to be no concern. His run style is no concern. He's gone from looking like an okay horse without blinkers to suddenly becoming my pick in a, in a grade one race with blinkers. His last one was better than his penultimate win in my book because he carried a heavy weight and he made lots of the opposition and he did things quite easier, uh, a lot easily than the, what the margin suggests and probably more impressive than the, uh, than the Derby Tower win. Marco van Rensburg loves this uh, son of Versen Getrix. Hard horse to beat. The reason why I'm going to say hard horse to beat is the number one purple pitcher is the only genuine proven grade one horse in this race, but he's going to have serious, serious stamina doubts. He's in my play because of the quality he brings and the sculpts that he's got, but for me, had the South African Classic been an extra 100 meters last time, he would have been in serious trouble. So six marauding horse from number one purple pitcher, purple pitcher only in because of his class, rather than my belief of him being the horse to beat. Yep, that's number one. Purple Pitcher is at the top of betting boards, but Alistair likes the look of number six, Marauding Horde, in race number eight. We're moving along to race number nine. Whirlpool Premier's Champions uh, Challenge, a grade one over 2,000 metres. 16.45 is the off time. Royal Victory, your nine to two favourite. Five to one, Porto Manzano. Cousin Casey at five to one. Eleven to two, Dave the King and uh, Winchester Mansion. And then it's seven to one. And better bar though. Scratch number six without question. It's a field of 13 runners that remain. Alistair, what's your thoughts on, on race number nine? I, I like the look of um, Puerto Manzano just because he's a horse that uh, always tends to rise to the occasion. And Gavin gets a good tune out of him. And I think his last start is best ignored. But um, your thoughts on the ninth race? We're here, if there's a pace, I think Puerto Manzano will win, but will there be a pace? Much like the big race on the cup where they walked, that was totally uh, Puerto Manzano's undoing. After the field in the pit six, I've had discussions with you, I've had discussions with a lot of people about who's going to come out on top of this race, and I'm just, I'm entangled, I don't really know. 11 safe passage for me represents a lot of value because I think pound for pound he's up there with this caliber and capable of winning a race of this nature. But again, he's very much pace dependent. If they go a good pace, number 11 safe passage will be a player. If they walk, then he's going to be in a touch of trouble. I think he got away with one of the Betway Summer Cup by getting that close because he was placed a little bit closer than what is the norm for number 11 safe passage. Lots of a chance of Royal Victory. He's a huge player as well. I know he won the Betway Summer Cup, but on that run, he's got a lot of horses in get behind him. Um, and if it rains, Zeus, if there's a lot of rain, and by this stage of the day, it could be the softest and the wettest of the day, and before Zeus becomes a huge player as well. We're here to answer your question. If, if they go a good pace, two birds of on in our top choice. If they don't go a good pace, and that is a distinct possibility, then absolutely anything can happen. It certainly is a very, very trappy contest and uh, it's a field race in Alistair's opinion. Field race in, uh, those, in that pick six and if you're running in the pick six uh, into the last leg with, uh, with poor underfoot conditions, well, you want to have the field there because uh, you'd w w hope for the worst possible result but the best possible result for you in those uh, exotics. Moving along to race number 10, this is a four race in Caradoc Gold Cup, uh, a listed event over 2,850 meters. Red Maple breeze over joint favourites at eleven to two, six to one about Crimson King. He's found support from eight to one. It's seven to one the brass, eight to one, and better ball those. Now, um, if the conditions come up uh, as very soft in race number ten, by the time this race runs, well, it's going to be a real, real test of stamina. And uh, who can you see coming out uh, on top uh, if it uh, does turn out to be that way, Alistair? Number one, the brass. 
Um, he's going to be made to fill his dates with the next day of the race by a country mile radio, but uh, I'm down the bottom of the weights. This race traditionally favors horses with light weights, and number nine brings over, of course, one of the uh, ROA stays, uh, stakes on Betway Sunday Cup Day. And on that run, he's got a few horses held behind him, and he actually won with contentious ease. He's got 50 kilos on his back, he's got draw number one. There's a lot in the sun of twice over his favor, so I'm going to give him the vote of confidence to finish off the race meeting at Turpentine. On Saturday, I have all the respect in the world from the brass. I don't know about Crimson King over this trip. I know he won the Aquanaut, but this is going to be made a lot harder for the son of Dynasty, who's got question marks over his stamina. Um, he's not been past 2,400 metres in his career. I think good counts of Black Thorn. Razor Hallelujah needed his last time. Daddy, he'll run better. I don't know if he'll win, but he'll run better. Um, all those horses, I think, come into the picture. Red Maple, the huge chance as well in my book. Um, I think that she'll go well. But number nine, Green's over. I think a lot points into his direction. He's not going to carry any dead weight. You know, a lot of these 50 kilos, a lot of the jockeys are putting up a little bit of extra weight. Um, obviously, because it's, it's a tough ass to get down to 50 kilos, especially for the last race of the day. So I'm going with number nine, Green's over. And the music here for the Aziz. He's my top choice in the finale. 11 to 2, the price about this four year old son of twice over. Breeze over, looking to notch up career win number four, and he's going to be the top selection in race number 10. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now, and Alistair will take us through his suggested bet. And uh, looking forward to the meeting on Saturday, and uh, when it comes to the big meetings, Alistair lines up a pick six for the guys out there. So, uh, Alistair, take us through uh, your pick six. Target 8 million round in the pick six, off town quarter to two, don't miss it. Uh, first leg race four, one and builds rocket, seven sandring and summit, eight lucky lad and ten white pearl. Then the uh, second leg, which is of course the uh Bush of South African Bridget Oppenheimer Oaks up on banker number one on the card, who is Silver Sanctuary. Uh, banker number six, give me another. For me, the double Cliff Swallow Hollywood Beds Kenilworth and Gimme Another is paid A. Then in the Johnson Workday computer form sprint, one dice, two William Robertson, three Thunderstruck and twelve Golden Sickle. By one and six, purple picture, marauding hold, marauding hold, easily my top choice. And then field in the final league, if we get that far, I'll enjoy the grade one uh, premier's champions challenge rather than have a solid opinion. Yeah, it is Alistair's uh, suggested bet, a pick six for racing out at Turfentine on Saturday. Alistair, thanks very much for your time. Looking forward to racing on uh on a Saturday, it's set to be a cracking day's racing. There's uh, 19 races on uh, the SA calendar on the Saturday, and uh, it all uh, looks to be... Uh, it all makes uh, up to be uh, a great day's racing, so uh, we can't wait for the action to get underway. Absolutely great race meeting. I'll certainly be tuned in, enjoying all of the action. It's a memorable day, it always is, and uh, I wish all the Panthers and all the connections well. Thanks very much to Alistair Cohen. All the best with racing out at Turfentine on Saturday. Hopefully uh, it treats you well.